Welcome back to the channel, good friends. Brian from Apex Detail. This is the second video of this short series, Correcting and Protecting the Quattroporte. And since we left off pre-treating the line paint that's on the side of the car uh, to soften it up and make it uh, easy to remove, we can work on other things while that is happening. We can clean and protect the calipers, finish detailing the wheel well area, and also clean and coat the wheels. We pretty much schedule packages that are similar to this throughout the year, just making small adjustments depending on the budget for each package. We're going to clean the caliper here. I used the built hammer wheel cleaner for the caliper, and then we'll protect it using uh, the same coating we'll use on the wheels. It's a will be able to withstand high temperatures. And what you need to keep in mind, passenger cars, um, mid-sized passenger cars anyways, the braking systems can reach and exceed 400, 500 degrees. Where utility and heavier SUVs can reach 800 to 1,000 degrees. And then you have your industrial equipment and track cars. Uh, those braking systems can reach and sometimes exceed 1,400 degrees. And there are coatings that will accommodate each. These wheels were treated with a wheel cleaner outside. Uh, that was done in the first video, but I do want to go over them with a surface prep. We've handled them, so I want to get the oil from my fingers, uh, and if we bumped up against it, just make sure the surface is completely naked before applying the coating. And as you saw there, the Art to Shine wheel coating is the coating of choice here today. And we're also, again, we're going to protect that caliper. With that complete and the rest of the wheel arch detailed, we could put the wheel back on, tighten the lug nuts up to spec, drop the car, and we're ready to move on. The line paint on the inner fender wells and the lower um, side skirts and rocker panels have been soaking in the WD-40 and the petroleum jelly, so it's now soft enough where it can be easily removed. And that's what we're going to tackle next. I'll just put just a little bit of the Goof Off Pro in a microfiber and I'll start to rub the area and remove the line paint. It comes off rather easy now. Uh, a lot In the inner fender well you could just use one of the plastic uh, blades and it'll just pluck those off one by one. There's no real quick and easy way to go about this. You have to keep in mind anything that will remove the line paint and break that down is also strong enough to damage some of the newer trim plastic pieces on uh, modern cars these days, which is becoming thinner and softer and cheaper. The line paint is now removed from those areas, including the wheel wells, and that ate up a good hour and a half, two hours. The next thing I want to get out of the way before attacking painted surfaces are these exhaust tips. And I may do things in a completely different order than you may see elsewhere or, or what you do. There's no wrong answer there. As long as you get the results you're looking for, the path to get there is your own. With that out of the way, I can now concentrate on removing imperfections. I'm going to start with the deeper ones first, and I'm going to do what is called spot correcting. And I'll just grab a smaller polisher and attack those areas in a small area, uh, removing as little clear as um, possible. If I need to wet sand or color sand, I will do so. Uh, if I can get away with a polish or a compound, that would be best. I 
I can't exactly tell you what to use when spot correcting because it will all depend on what you're going after and the clear coat type, hard, medium, or soft. Uh, I just used a couple drops of 3D ACA 500 and 3D1. Uh, yeah, I like to combine different products um, that do different types of chores. Uh, it's just trial by error and experimentation and you'll find something that works this clear coat by the way is medium soft leaning more towards soft i picked out the worst part of this hood to do a test area because the very first thing i want to do after spot crash correction is a test area to remove the rest of the scratches and swirls that remain and those are mostly topical when I'm doing a test spot, this may help you, a tip that may help. When I'm doing a test spot on really anything, it's going to be with 3D1 and uh, your fiber pad. It's pretty much neutral right down the middle between aggressive and non-aggressive. So that way I can adjust slightly more aggressive or less aggressive uh, depending on the results I get from this test area. And I'll bring you in close. You can see it removed the scratches and swirls. And I could just adjust slightly from here, but this combination would work just fine. I would have to follow up and do a little bit more finishing. So now that we know the combination that works, I'll have Junior get all of the equipment we need, the polishers and product, and I will prepare the car in the meantime. Uh, the wheels are all finished. We're going to cover those so they don't get dusty. They're perfectly clean and protect them. We can let them cure uh, and tuck them away for now. And then we can do some masking. There really isn't a ton of masking to do on this car, just some pieces here and there that are plastic trim. Some cars you'll have a lot to do. Some cars, pretty much nothing. As you can see, the B-pillar here, which is black piano finish, is in rough shape. And I haven't covered them in a while. And since there's been uh, quite a few subscribers to join, I'll go over them uh, in a little bit more detail than usual. In this series, I'll speed up areas that we've covered a lot already, and I don't need to repeat myself. And then I'll slow down areas where I want to talk about them and share some information. So I'm going to spot uh, correct some more and work on some areas uh, so Junior can come around and finish the correction. And while he's doing that, I can actually work on these B-pillars. Black piano finish, guys. The protective layer on top is actually rather soft, so you don't need a lot of aggression. These are in really bad shape, so I'll just use a 50-50 pad and 3D1. And I have that attached to the roops, or rupees, however you want to say it, um, LHR75, which, in my opinion, is the best polisher that they have. On some of these pillars, you may get pad transfer, so don't freak out if you turn the polisher around and you see a little bit of black uh, finish transferred onto the pad. That is natural on some. Some have the tinted clear protective covering. I'm going to switch to a very soft pad since the covering on these pillars are soft and finish them out to a high gloss. Already much better now, but you can do quite a few passes with that soft pad and get them to your liking. Now, since uh, Junior has moved ahead nicely and is progressing, I can kind of clean up. Uh, I can use a smaller polisher so he doesn't have to switch and he can keep moving. Uh, it's, it's called teamwork, guys. If you have somebody to help you out, you're going to get done so much quicker. And if you have a routine, it's, it's excellent. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm taping off the peaks with uh, pinch strike tape. So if you're not comfortable with uh, peaks and the tips of body lines and you don't want to rub or burn through the clear, protect them and then just remove them before the next step where you're polishing them out. You'll really save the clear coat. I'm going to grab the LHR75. Uh, I'll stay with the 3-inch polisher here for these body lines and I will remove all the swirls in these hard-to-get areas.
all swirls and scratches removed with no harm done to the top of those contours and body lines where just naturally the material, the clear coat, the primer, and the base coat are a little bit thinner. So I'm going to get my light and inspect this body line right here in the center of the hood. It needs to be gone after because the larger pad from uh, his 5-inch backing plate is just hard to get in those areas. So I'll take care of them. And for this, I'll use a 2-inch pneumatic polisher. Pneumatic polishers are my favorite. Uh, the power is unmatched. They are so smooth. The only drawback, if you don't have the right hoses, are the hoses that connect to them themselves. Uh, if you can get some nice, pliable, soft hoses, you're in good shape. And over 13 minutes has flown by already. Time flies when you're having fun. That's going to do it for this video. Uh, we'll pick up where we left off in the next one. Thanks for stopping by, guys. If you have any questions, you know where the comment box is. Catch you later.